So here we are talking about stationarity, in particular in MA and AR processes. Now you may remember that when we derive the properties of the MA infinity process, here it is, the MA infinity process, remember theta naught is equal to 1, we actually had to impose some restrictions on the coefficients. We had to impose this absolute summability restriction and the reason why we had to do that was to ensure that we got a finite variance for our process yt. Okay, and the variance was sigma squared, that's the residual or error term variance, times the sum of all theta s squared. When we then linked the MA infinity process a, or a restricted version of the MA infinity process where the restriction was theta s is equal to phi 1 times theta s minus 1 and used that restriction to obtain an AR1 process we then had to impose a restriction on theta 1 and in particular we had imposed that the absolute value of theta 1 was smaller than 1 and again that was to ensure that the variance of the process which now was established to be th uh, sigma squared times 1 over 1 minus phi 1 squared, that this was a sensible value. Okay. So the, the conclusion so far is that not any MA or AR process has the nice properties we derived, or we can derive. So this now leads us to think that really we need some sort of restrictions and the, the restrictions we're going to use is that of imposing that our process is a stationary process. Now there are all sorts of definitions of stationarity. The one we are using here is uh, goes under different names, sometimes called covariant stationarity or weak stationarity or second order stationarity. Now, what is the definition of this concept of stationarity? So, let's write that down. There are three elements to this, and they are related to the moments and properties of the process Y. So, we say that a stationary, a stationary process has the following, has the following properties. First, the expected value of yt is equal to mu, or whatever letter you use, but it's equal to a constant which is finite and is independent of time t. So you can see on the right hand side there's no t subscript. Second, the variance of yt, and we let's label that gamma naught, is also finite and independent of t. And third, the covariance of yt with yt minus j, let's call that gamma j, is equally finite and independent of t for any value of j. Okay, so these are the covariances for different legs, and they should be the same at any time, only dependent on the lag j, but not on the time t. So, broadly speaking, what does that mean? Uh, and you now I, I use a very sort of broad view of what, how we could look at that. So broadly speaking, this means that if you have, say, 50 years of data for a particular process, if it is a stationary process, then in some sense you can use the years 1 to, say, 26 to learn about the properties for the process during the years 27 to 50. Okay, so we can use a subsample to learn about the characteristics of another subsample. And that is, of course, incredibly important if we think about forecasting. And that's what we'll be looking at later. Let's look at an example. Here we have a GDP series. Now, let's put a line straight through here around at the middle of the data. So the question is, are the properties, the first and the second moments of the process for covariant stationary, the same in the first and the second subsample? And here clearly not. Here clearly the expected value is very different. So this no, this is certainly not a stationary series. So we have very different means. Let's use the 
DGDP, so that's the difference of GDP data. Okay. And we can do the same again. We draw a line through about half the sample, and again we are asking are the first two moments of the series broadly similar in the first subsample and the second subsample? And here we can say perhaps, or there's no direct indication that it isn't. So it could be that this series is stationary. Okay. Usually we can't really tell from just looking at data, that's why I'm a bit guarded. Sometimes you can clearly say it's not. So we need to establish now when certain processes are stationary. Now before we continue that, let me add a little note. I used the word processes here. Remember we distinguish between processes and data models. If you want to establish whether actual time series is stationary or not, we usually use hypothesis tests of the the uh, most common type is the ADF tests, the augmented Dicky Fuller tests. Okay, so what we're looking at here is theoretical processes or data generating processes. If you want to test real time series for stationarity, we use hypothesis tests. They are, of course, they will be built on our understanding of theoretical process stationarity. So for the MA infinity, we established previously that it is stationarity if the absolute summability condition is met. As we can link the MA infinity or restricted version to the AR1, we can use that restriction to also find what the condition for an AR1 process is for stationarity. So the restriction was that theta s equals phi 1 times theta s minus 1 that led to theta s being equal to phi 1 to the power of s and to our AR1 representation of that particular process. So let's go back to the absolute summability condition of the uh, MA infinity process. So we will use that. So we will establish that AR1 is stationary if, and now we're we look at that absolute summability condition again. So if the sum from s equals 0 to infinity of the absolute value of phi 1 to the s is smaller than infinity, here phi 1 to the s because that was equal to theta s, then we have a stationary process. Now that is the case if phi, the absolute value of phi 1 is smaller than 1. Now if you look at that closely, you, that possibly makes sense, but to, to illustrate that, let's use a little example. So we shall use as an example that, what shall we do, that 5.1 is equal to 0 0.5. Now let's just plug 0 0.5 in here in that absolute summability condition. Um, 0 0.5 to the naught is equal to 1 and 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 to the 1 that's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 squared and so forth 0 0.5 cubed so that's 0 0.5 squared and 0 0.5 cubed and so forth and you can see all the additional term, uh, terms that will become smaller and smaller so therefore uh, uh, you can establish that this turns out to be smaller than infinity. It's a finite value. If, however, theta is equal to 1, then this summation will just keep adding 1s. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, And that is not finite. This will just be infinite. So, our AR1 stationarity condition is AR1 stationary if the absolute value of phi 1 is equal is smaller than 1. Now, you may ask, what about an ARP process? What's the stationarity condition here? And the discussion of that I leave to a different clip, or you can check your lecture notes.